As a horse owner, at some stage, you are going to experience a colic episode in your horse. Colic simply refers to evidence of abdominal pain uh, in a horse, and it comes from a wide variety of causes. But referring to abdominal pain, well, what causes the abdominal pain? Most colic episodes are quite transient in origin and probably either reflect some regional spasm of some part of the intestinal tract. Uh, horses, because they're large forage eaters, there, there's a lot of gas that is created by digesting forage. Uh, and so uh, many horses will have a temporary bout of, of uh, a flatulent type colic, probably just uh, pain emanating from stretch receptors in their, in their colon. Uh, and again, it's going to be very temporary in origin. The big challenge for someone owning a horse is some of the colic episodes that start out as mild episodes can progress into serious life-threatening episodes. Um, and that's obviously something you want to avoid. For instance, a horse that gets a lot of gas that accumulates in its colon, it affects the motility of the colon, how it moves. Horses get uh, lie down and roll a lot when they have a, a stomach ache. Uh, and the end result of um, some of those cases is that you end up with a malposition of some part of the intestinal tract. And that mostly involves the large colon. If you have one of those situations, it's not going to replace itself. That horse is going to, in, is going to require surgery. And it's one of the reasons that you don't want to wait too long before you get a horse evaluated. Well, what kind of time is too long? I would recommend if you see your horse colicking, uh, just to initially just observe them. Uh, see if they want to lie down frequently, if they want to roll frequently. Uh, keeping them from rolling is, is, doesn't matter. You, you know, you'll hear people who walk their horses uh, for hours sometimes through a colic episode and it just doesn't make sense. Just observe their activity. If they roll, it doesn't increase your odds they're going to twist their colon. Uh, just observe their behavior. Try and get a pulse rate. If you've got a stethoscope, it's probably easier to get a heart rate uh, and see how elevated it is. Check a temperature. These vital signs are ones that will be important when you call your veterinarian to relay to them. It's okay to walk them. It's not mandatory, but you don't need to walk them forever to try and get through an episode. With most cases, it's going to be transient. 30 to 60 minutes uh, and the problem will resolve and uh, you'll be back to normal. If you get beyond an hour and your horse has signs, uh, particularly if they're progressive, they're getting up and down, lying down more frequently. The evidence of pain seems more extreme. Uh, you need to get your veterinarian called and have them evaluate so that you can hopefully make the determination, is this a surgical candidate or not? That may not be apparent to the veterinarian at initial visit, but you're at least you've started the process of monitoring and seeing which way it goes now over the next couple of hours. If those signs are persistent, uh, the horse is probably going to need surgery, and the horse may sh be showing some signs at the time of initial veterinary examination that they can ascertain this horse will require surgery. And then on your part, it's going to be, uh, what are the risks, what is the prognosis, and do I want to go that route? Do I want to go the surgical route? And that obviously takes uh, a real dialogue between you and your veterinarian.